Morning, how you doing? Today I want to talk to you about Lord Byron. Uh, mad, bad and dangerous to know. Uh, Lord Byron, as I'm sure you know, was a very famous poet and writer. Uh, had a very interesting life, well worth checking out. I'm not going to talk to you about his life in general, um, what I am going to talk to you about is the fact that he was a pugilist. Um, rather than me just assemble facts from all over the place, I thought the most interesting thing to do would be to turn this into a smackanori of sorts and read to you um, straight from Fights for the Championship, The Men and Their Times by Fred Henning. Uh, a wonderful book, uh, two volumes, fantastic. Really, really worth getting. If you see a copy of this around, pick it up. Um, it's great. But in the chapter where he discusses John Jackson, who, who he really likes, by the way, um, and rightly so, uh, he, he mentions Byron and talks about him a little bit. So I thought perhaps we'll read what Henning has to say about Lord Byron. Then came the opening of Jackson's rooms at number 13 Old Bond Street, where he taught the youngsters from each of the universities and from far and near the noble science. Indeed, not to have had lessons from Mr. Jackson was considered a positive neglect of a gentleman's ordinary education. So the ex-champion came in personal contact with the highest in the land. It was said that to give a list of his pupils would be to copy out one third of the peerage. One, however, we must say a few words about. Byron, who loved the fine athletic exercise, was an enthusiastic follower of Jackson and became one of his staunchest friends. All will remember the author of Don Juan referring to the great professor in a note to the 11th canto of that famous work. He wrote, My friend and corporeal master and pastor, John Jackson Esquire, professor of pugilism, who, I trust, still retains the strength and symmetry of his model and form, together with his good humour and athletic as well as mental accomplishments. Was that not a eulogy from such a source? But then our hero was refined, courteous, intellectual and well-educated, a fit associate for the highest in the land, and yet a professional pugilist. Although everybody, even the most enthusiastic admirer of pugilism, must admit that the ring has, and always had, many unpleasant people and matters associated with it, there cannot be any doubt that when a man like Jackson took the lead in the ranks of pugilists, it became an honourable and gentlemanly pastime, making Britons what they are today. Just a little aside here. It's amazing the way everybody writes about Jackson. Now, he only fought three times, and he lost one of them, uh, but he did destroy the great Daniel Mendoza in um, the fight that awarded him the championship. But it's amazing quite how much everybody seems to have respected him. Um, I guess we just need to find out more. Anyway, but to return to Byron, he wrote in his diary, Jackson has been here, the boxing world went as usual, but the club increases, i.e. the pugilistic club. I shall dine at Cribs tomorrow. Speaking of this particular dinner, the great poet writes, just returned from dinner with Jackson, the emperor of pugilism, and another of the selected, Cribs, the champion. We must point out that this was several years after our hero had defeated Mendoza, Jackson at the time being 44, and the author of Child Harold, but 23. Byron, in another allusion to his tutor, shows that he actually went into training. I have been sparring with Jackson for exercise this morning, and mean to continue and renew my acquaintance with my mufflers. My chest and arms and wind are in very good plight, and I am not in flesh. I used to be a hard hitter, and my arms are very long for my height. At any rate, the exercise is good, and this is the severest of all. Fencing and broadsword never fatigued me half so much. Again, on the 17th of March, 1814, he writes, Got up, if anything, earlier than usual, sparred with Jackson ad sudorum, and have been much better in health than for many days. It, it amazes me how pugilism used to be seen as completely acceptable for the gentry and the aristocracy of the land. 
when when it first started, it was very much the art of of the working class. Um, and through the actions of men like Jackson, it became completely acceptable for for even royalty to take part. There's a lovely story, and I'll try and dig it out rather than just paraphrase it, but um, of, of the Prince Regent taking part in a bout as a second. Uh, and I believe he even used to spar. But anyway, that's a very brief look at uh, Byron as a pugilist. There are a number of other famous writers and poets who were also involved in the pugilistic world. So uh, keep your eyes open for a, vi a video on uh, some of them. If you're new to the channel, it would be great if you subscribed. That would be awesome. Um, also, it would be really nice if you checked out my, uh, my, my Patreon page. Um, videos like this are possible because of the support of my patrons. And I am deeply grateful to you all. Um, it's fantastic and I couldn't do this without you. So if you're a subscriber, uh, hit the bell icon, um, stick something in the comments, let me know what you think of Byron. Have you even heard of him? I was chatting to somebody at work recently who was an, a Jane Austen scholar and she didn't know who George Byron was. So yeah, came as a bit of a surprise. Um, anyway, I'll see you soon guys. Take care.